I first discovered the cottagecore aesthetic around this time last year, and for those of you who've never heard of it, it's essentially a romanticised version of Western agricultural life that covers multiple areas like fashion, interior design, and certain hobbies. Think of sprawling meadows and lush woodlands, along with a small modest cottage and a garden of homegrown fruits and vegetables. Imagine you brew teas from the herbs you picked from the nearby forest, or make jams from wild berries. And maybe in the evening, you curl up next to candlelight and read an old leather-bound book. There is a great emphasis on the natural world, so activities such as foraging and picking berries are popular within this aesthetic. The simple, sustainable and slow-paced lifestyle that Cottagecore depicts also emphasises handmade objects and crafting, as well as farming, baking and gardening. There is an obvious lack of technology, which may seem slightly ironic given Cottagecore's prevalence on social media, particularly during the pandemic, which would also explain all the bread baking and handicrafts that became very popular over the past year or so. Cottagecore allows the fantasy of escaping the city and the stresses of working life, and instead entering an idyllic rural paradise. It's not a realistic picture of a lifestyle in the countryside or on a farm by any means, but during a time where a lot of us were in lockdowns or isolation, this idealised outdoor setting was what so many people craved. While Cottagecore still offers a great sense of seclusion, the aesthetic itself has brought together a community. In addition to this, it still feels safe within the context of a pandemic, where keeping as far away from people as possible is a good idea. In essence, you're part of a community, but in a separate space. You're alone, but you're not lonely. Rowan Ellis' video Why is Cottagecore so gay? goes into depth about the popularity of Cottagecore within the LGBTQ community, as well as some problematic connotations that can arise with the aesthetic, particularly surrounding colonialism. So if you're interested in learning more about Cottagecore, I highly recommend watching that video. There are also many other aesthetics connected to Cottagecore along with its subcategories. I'll be honest and say that it can get a little confusing remembering all the subtle differences, but for the most part, they are all very similar and often overlap. These other aesthetics include Goblincore, Fairycore, and Dark Academia, some of which I'll explain a bit later. Examples of Cottagecore media include The Wind in the Willows, Kiki's Delivery Service, Moonrise Kingdom, and The Moomins which all feature the environment and or lifestyle I've discussed. And in regards to YouTube channels, my current favourite is The Cottage Fairy, whose videos are filled with quaint snippets of a picturesque cottagecore lifestyle, and I genuinely don't think I have ever watched anything so peaceful. I've seen cottagecore applied to movies, TV shows, books, fashion, and lifestyle elements. However, the discussion of video games that fall under this aesthetic is quite limited, while it's fairly simple to label visuals and art direction as Cottagecore, I wanted to explore how gameplay would come into it too. I played and analysed multiple games, but the conclusion that I came to is that Minecraft is the perfect Cottagecore game. Now that we have a basic understanding of Cottagecore, Let's look into games that I believe fall under this aesthetic. As I've mentioned before, there will be a lot of crossovers with Fairycore and Goblincore. Fairycore focuses on more magical elements, and Goblincore is based on what is typically considered to be ugly, so things like mud, moss, and snails. Visually, there are a lot of games that can be considered cottagecore. Game series like The Legend of Zelda have fairy fountains and magical forests featured through its multiple art styles. All are thriving environments with deep, rich colours and a mystical air, accompanied by music that immediately makes me think of a leisurely walk in the woods. Although this falls a little more into the fairy core category, the series frequently features stables and humble villages, whose interior design is very much in tune with the cottage core aesthetic. The handmade pots and decorations and rustic wooden furniture fill these cosy buildings with an earthy peacefulness. As well as this, the villagers sometimes have livestock or vegetables growing on nearby land, highlighting a sustainable, slow-living lifestyle that Cottagecore is all about. There are obviously many other games that adopt a rural setting, whether it's for the entire game or just a single area, like in Kingdom Hearts 100 Acre Wood. There are titles like Moss, Ori in the Blind Forest, Ghost of a Tale, and Tukani, 
most of which adopt a cute small creature as the protagonist, which is usually the case in other cottagecore media. Combat, of course, isn't very suited to the aesthetic, so while a lot of the games I've shown are visually aligned with it, I wondered what gameplay would be most fitting. My immediate thought was that Life Sims would best encompass cottagecore gameplay, especially farming sims like the Harvest Moon series or Stardew Valley, that include activities like looking after animals and crops, making food, fishing, and decorating your character and home. Plus, with Stardew Valley mods, you can tweak the aesthetic even further by adding adorable, overgrown buildings and wildflowers. You can even get full interior redesigns or more recipes to cook, along with different models for animals. It's all very easily customizable. There are also games like the Boku no Natsuyasumi series, which follow a young boy's summer vacation. You can catch and collect insects, milk cows, or just explore the area to your heart's content. It's all to your own pace, and listening to the wildlife around you is always very grounding in the best way possible. You can get titles that focus on a specific activity that could be considered cottagecore. Each shade, for example, is centered on the act of painting. As a traveling artist, you explore beautiful scenery in the search of the right spot for your artwork, meeting new characters and fulfilling their requests as you go. There are other games that feature elements of cottagecore in their gameplay too, with series like Atelier which involve alchemy. The act of gathering materials from the wilderness is obviously very fitting, but there's also a lot of combat in this case, which isn't quite what we're looking for. So far, Stardew Valley is our best contender for the perfect cottagecore game, but I'd like to talk a little bit about The Sims and Animal Crossing. The Sims has directly acknowledged this internet aesthetic with its new expansion for Sims 4, called Cottage Living. However, The Sims is more impersonal when it comes to its actions. You play more of a god role controlling a character rather than inhabiting them yourself, so the joy of commanding certain things like cooking wears off pretty quickly. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, you can essentially turn your island into a perfect woodland paradise if you so choose, but the options aren't really that varied. There aren't mods or expansion packs, only the occasional update that doesn't really add much. So in your quest to create a cottagecore paradise, you'll find that there's only so much you can use that'll be a good match. In addition to this, these free games all involve social aspects and many other characters. The isolation you'd expect from a cottagecore game just isn't there, and while you could probably avoid it, it wouldn't leave a lot else to do. Besides, there's so much space used up by the homes of other characters, so it almost feels like a waste. But there is one game that strikes the right balance. Minecraft definitely wasn't my first choice when approaching this subject, but after revisiting it recently, I knew that this was the perfect cottagecore game. For starters, there are lots of animals, with new ones being added with almost every large update. Rabbits, foxes, and the usual farm animals are relatively easy to find, and bring back to wherever you've decided to build your home. Biomes include forests, plains, hills, and so much more. And even if you don't find your perfect building spot, you can plant trees, flowers, and completely reform the terrain if you wish. By having a procedurally generated map, you're at the mercy of the natural world around you. Whether you're able to find certain materials is all down to what biomes spawn in, but it does give you a hint of realism when it comes to the foraging aspect. There's a comforting insignificance in the face of the natural world, as you go out on trips to find what you can, then make use of it in building your home or crafting necessary tools. And while Minecraft's default texture pack is absolutely fine, I like to push my experience even closer to the cottagecore aesthetic by using Mizuno's texture pack, which enhances the appearance of everything. But there's also something called CIT packs, which add new decorative items to put into your world. I personally use Mizuno's CIT, which has a fantastic selection of plants, food items, and furniture pieces to create the perfect cottage home interior. If you're like me, you might not be the most creative when it comes to Minecraft builds, but thanks to many tutorials online, you can follow instructions to make your perfect home. I personally went a little more into fairy core with mine and used a tutorial by Kelpie the Fox to forge a cozy, overgrown underground base. I made a few changes, but having a starting point to build off of really helped me when I was stuck. There's such a good variation of cottagecore build ideas online along with numerous mods, shaders, and resource packs to modify the visuals to your liking. 
And as someone who first played the game during its beta phase, it's really cool to see how the game has evolved so much during this time, both through official game updates and the modding community. In regards to Minecraft's gameplay, there's something in particular that I think works best for the sake of Cottagecore, and that's survival. Existing in a living state with hunger and health instead of a static one means that the act of eating is necessary, which thereby makes cooking a meal far more meaningful, in comparison to, say, Animal Crossing, where eating is mostly just a gimmick. In Minecraft, you can grow a range of crops like wheat, beetroot, and potatoes, all of which can then be used to make bread or soup, for example, and having access to sugarcane, chickens, and cows will give you the option of baking a cake. Cooking and baking is a large part of a cottagecore lifestyle, so having these actions not be empty is another incentive for the player to take part in them. As well as making meals, crafting in general is an integral part of Minecraft's experience. Even without CIT packs, there's plenty of blocks and items to create. This is of course aligned with the importance of the handmade within the cottagecore aesthetic. There is however the question of combat. Minecraft's normal difficulties will spawn in enemies at night or in dark places like caves, and because you may need to go mining for coal and iron for instance, you will come across spiders, skeletons, and the like in doing so, unless you play on peaceful mode. This difficulty level will remove pretty much all the enemies from the overworld, but it does also mean your hunger bar never depletes, although there are mods which will enable the normal hunger settings. You can still die even in peaceful, but as long as you watch your step, you'll be safe and sound. There's also creative mode, so if you just feel like building and decorating a small cottage without having to spend the time to find all the resources you need, you can do that too. Unless you're playing multiplayer, you feel so small in comparison to the endless map. There's no need to play the game with others to experience the game to the fullest, but you can if you want to. On single player, you may still come across villages which are good for trading, but they don't have any social sim mechanics or dialogue to make them feel different to any other mob, so there's still a good level of isolation that Cottagecore is all about. To conclude, while there are many games that can be considered Cottagecore visually, Minecraft's gameplay also connects to the lifestyle elements through its survival mechanics. Its options for terraforming, gardening, and building are immense, and what Animal Crossing, The Sims, and Stardew Valley all individually do well in regards to Cottagecore gameplay, Minecraft has all of them and then some. It's been fun for me to look at how internet aesthetics that are normally associated with literature or film can translate into video games, as well as narrow it down to one title which I think suits it best. But at the end of the day, your Minecraft experience is so customizable, you can make it into anything with mods and changes to in-game settings. Minecraft can be not only a cottagecore game, but also a battle royale or a Pokemon type game with the right mods. Its versatility is unmatched. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.